الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أناجيه ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أصيح ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربودية ونفر له بالعبودية من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأول ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والشهداء والصديقين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين وصحابته المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أرأيت من اتخذ إلهه هواه أفأنت تكون عليه وكيلا أم تحسب أن أكثرهم يسمعون أو يعقلون إنهم كالأنعام بل هم أضل سبيلا صدق الله العلي العظيم The divine providence decrees that man has to be composed and consisted of two main parts. One is the reason, one is the reason and the intelligence, second is the urge, the desire and the natural instinct, the natural desire. Man's life, man's life revolves around these two components. And he has to strike the balance. He has to maintain equilibrium between the two. Neither he should live without urge, with absolute reason, nor he can live with absolute urge, with no reason. Both are important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created three different entities with the three different and distinguished qualities. One is the angels. Allah had created them من العقل المطلق from absolute reason and عقل لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون they don't have any desires <coughs> those are the angels the second <coughs> Allah created animals and who were made from absolute urge and desire they have no reason they do not incorporate their understanding because they don't have understanding. They have limited, very limited understanding. What drives them in this life is not reason. What drives an animal in this life is an absolute urge and desire. When he gets hungry, an, an, an animal would not question where this food comes from. Is this food halal, haram? from good income, from bad income? Did I pay the khums and zakat of this food? Is this food, does this food belong to others? None of these questions come to his mind. None. He is hungry, he has to eat at any expense because he is made, the animal is made, he or she of course, or it, is made of absolute urge. The animal is hungry. 
when it comes to the third entity, human being, man, and man here includes both men and women. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have given you both. And you have to judge yourself. You have to judge yourself where to use your urge and where to use your reason. A combination of both. You cannot depend only on reason and negate or neglect your desires. But do not let, do not let, this is the danger. The danger is here. This is the dangerous part. Do not let your desires, your urges, overcome and override and transgress and rebel against you. Keep them under control. The desire is very good as long as you have the control. You are controlling them. The day, the minute they start controlling you, it's the beginning of the disaster. You cannot control your life anymore. Because you made the desire and the urge to run you, to drive you, to navigate you, to take you to the direction they want. And they have only one direction, damnation. Desires are not going to take you to the right path. Our human desires are going to take us to the dangerous path. So you have to strike the balance between the two. On the one hand, the power of intellect and reason on the other hand, the power of urges and desires. When the desires, they overcome us and they defeat us, there is a term for this, theological, philosophical, Quranic term for this. Ittiba'ul hawa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to this. The victory of the desires over reason. In the Quran, Allah calls this phenomena Someone who decided to make his own desire and his own whims as his Lord, then you are not, he's not going to listen to you. You are not going to be a wakil over him, a guide over him. He's not going to listen to you. You are not going to be able to, to guide that person. That person is listening to the force of his own desires that shuts all of his thinking. It shuts his hearing. It shuts his vision. It shuts his heart. Then he's not going to listen to logic or to reason. He insists on what he wants, what his desire tells him, whether it is money, whether it is a relationship, whether it is food, whether it is a job, that's it. You are not going to be able to advise that person. And then Allah in the following verse, after that he says, وَتَحْسَبْ those who follow their own desires, you think they can listen to you or they can incorporate their reason, they can understand, they fathom what you say? No. In whom kal an'am, they are like animals and cattle, bal avallu sabila. An'am, animals, if you train them to do, to leave their place and go to the to the ranch and eat and enjoy and come back, they would listen to you. If you rehearse that with them a couple of times, they're going to remain on the course. They are not going to, to deviate from that. But man, the arrogant man, who gives preference to his desires, to his hawa, is not going to listen to anyone. He's not going to listen to the advice of any person because he has been overwhelmed with his own desires. He puts his own desires first. In whom kal an'am, bal avallu sabila. Now, what are the repercussions and the outcomes of following our desires? What will happen? Listen. Listen to this series of catastrophes 
in our life. If a person decides to put his hawa and his desire first, Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wa salam in Nahj al Balagha, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam states, إن أخوف ما أخاف عليكم إثنان اتباع الهوى وطول الأمل. The two most dangerous diseases that all people I fear for you because of them. I don't fear that you die of poverty. I don't fear that you going to die of a certain disease. But what I fear, اتباع الهوى. You going to follow your own whims. Listen to them. And be enslaved. Be enslaved. You have no control over yourself. You let your desire run you. Left and right. You listen to your desire. This is the most dangerous thing you do. ما تحت ظل السماء من إله يعبد من دون الله. There is nothing under this sky. Nothing worse than a deity, إله, a Lord, a deity that is worshipped beside Allah. من دون الله. Then هوا متبع, a followed desire. When someone starts following his own desire, that is the most the worst kind of deity. Sometimes someone worships a statue. Sometimes a tree. Sometimes the sun and the moon. Sometimes a cow. But what is worse than that and most dangerous is when he starts not worshipping the sun or the moon or the cow or the statue when he worships his own desire. Min hawan muttaba. His desire becomes his Lord. That is the most dangerous person. The most dangerous person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us certain examples in the Quran, gives us these examples in the Quran about those who follow their own desires. And see for yourself what are the repercussions here. One, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Kahf says, وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَخْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ the result of following the desire is to have a power surge. Power surge, we call it in America power surge. The Islam calls this ghafla, forgetfulness. Ghafla, if you translate ghafla to today to a modern language, it's a power surge, an outage of power from the heart, a disconnection of the power from the heart. Ghafla, forgetfulness. From whom? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the result of following one's own desires. وَلَا تُطَعْ مَنْ أَخْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ Because he followed his own desires, the result is forgetfulness. الْغَفْلَ عَنِ اللَّهِ He forgets about his Lord. When it comes to the worst crime, he is ready to perpetrate that crime because Allah does not exist in his heart, in his life. There is a power out. There is no room for faith or Iman or God or Islam or any, any other human principle in his heart. This is one result. The second result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ittiba'ul hawa, following one's own whims and desires and urges, is the fountainhead of the disbelief in God, kufr and nifaq. Listen to the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا يَصُدَّنَّكَ عَنْهَا When he was preparing Musa alayhi salam for his mission, going to Pharaoh, preparing him and his brother Aaron, Allah said to them, فَلَا يَصُدَّنَّكَ عَنْهَا مَنْ اتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ فَلَا يَصُدَّنَّكَ عَنْهَا مَنْ لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِهَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the source of disbelief is one. If you want to search for the reason, it goes to one reason. hawa. This is what makes people turn away from their Lord. 
disbelief in their Lord, the rejection of, of the truth and justice and God and Islam and religion is following one's own desires. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the worst type of deviation is Nothing is worse than that. One day Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam was asked, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ma huwa aqwa wa ashaddu sultan? What is the sultan, the power, who, who is the, the sultan who is most powerful, who is most influential, in people's life what sultan what power what government he said huwa al hawa huwa al hawa aghlab al salatin wa aqwaha huwa al hawa the most powerful sultan and leader and a president is not the one who is sitting in the white house is your own desires because the sultan he can run his kingdom 300 million people he can run them easily he can control them easily, but when it comes to his own desire, maybe he fail in controlling his own desire. We have seen very strong, very influential leaders who are able to run the business of their government very smoothly, very easily. But when it came, when they were confronted by their own whims and desires and urges, they failed. They failed in their mission. They failed. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam says the most effective governor, afdal al umara the most powerful, the most competent, the most qualified governor, man kana amiran ala nafsih. Man kana amiran. He exercises leadership and control over his own self. It's easy to run 20 people or 30 or 50 or 500 or 5,000. But do you think it's easy to run your own self? To control your own self? It's very difficult. Very difficult. The other hadith, a person comes to Al-Imam al-Sadiq, the sixth Imam of the school of Ahlul Bayt. <clears throat> and he says to him, Ya ibn Rasulullah, Ayna tariq raha How can I be relaxed in my life? I always have tension in my life. I always encounter obstacles, problems in my life. Aina tariq raha Can you teach me a way that I can be relaxed in my life? Tension-free life. What is it? Al-Imam salam answered him in one word. He said, Fi khilaf al-hawa. To oppose your desire. Do you want to remain tension-free? No tension? No hustle in your life? No regret in your life, no remorse, no pain. Fi khilaf al hawa. Oppose and reject and stand firm in the face of your own desire. You will be the most relaxed person because you know you are not doing something wrong. When we do something wrong, we don't feel easy. We can't sleep the night. Allah says, I have created a device inside you, a device that comes to you in the evening. لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة Reproaching soul, it comes to you, starts bugging you, annoying you that you did something wrong. I'm not going to let you go. If the police cannot capture you, if they don't take you to the judge and the court, there is a bigger court, an internal court, an internal judge. لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة So you, 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 you feel disturbed? You feel disturbed, you have good food, good family, good income, but something inside you says you are wrong, you did something wrong. So when you oppose your hawa and your desire, you're going to feel relaxed. You're going to live in peace. I did nothing wrong. The most happiest person, brothers and sisters, is the one who goes home at the end of the day, busy day, knowing that today he did nothing wrong. Knowing. But he does not cheat himself. Huh? Some people, they cheat themselves. He did something wrong, but he, he denies that. No, but someone who really did not do something wrong, neither to himself nor to anybody else around him, 
everyone around him is happy about him. That is the happiest person. Amir al-Mu'mineen says the day, the real day of Eid, the real day of celebration, the day that passes by 24 hours and you did not commit a sin, that is a truly a day of celebration. That is the real day of Eid. You have to celebrate that day. That 24 hours has passed and alhamdulillah I remained immune and safe. I did not upset my Lord. That is the real day of joy. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim al-Asr in al-Insan al-Fi khusr illa al-Ladina amanu wa amilu al-Salihat wa tawasaw bil-Haqq wa tawasaw bil-Sabr wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ahli baytih al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدس على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربوبية ونقر له بالعبودية من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوليائه وأوصيائه وأهل بيته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهما السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره The 25th of Muharram was the anniversary of the martyrdom of the fourth Imam of the school of Ahl al-Bayt Al-Imam Ali ibn al-Husayn al-Sajjad Zain al-Abidin alayhi al-Salatu wa-Salam In such occasions, we try to learn and get inspired by the knowledge and the wisdom of Ahlul Bayt. Ahlul Bayt, Allah has designed them to be the source, the source of knowledge and wisdom for mankind. And thus, I have chosen one hadith from this great Imam. To learn from it a practical hadith we can implement this hadith it's not theoretical this hadith is a practical we can learn this and implement this in our daily life and believe me we need to listen to this hadith Al Imam والسلام, says in his advice to his family members and his followers he says, انظر إلى خمسة فلا تصاحبهم ولا تحادثهم ولا ترافقهم في الطريق Stay away from these five categories. Do not befriend them. Do not be their companions in a trip if you are traveling. Do not even speak to them. Stay away. Stay away from them. Far away from them. Five categories. One, إياك ومصاحبة الكذاب Be aware and be careful of befriending a liar A liar, especially we have sometimes professional liars huh? MashaAllah, veteran, veteran Someone who lies for 40 years, 50 years He becomes a veteran Stay away from that person فإنه كالسراب He is like a mirage He is like a mirage يقرب لك البعيد What is far reaching and impossible He make it easy for you 
He gives you false promises, things that he knows he cannot do for you. He cannot achieve. He cannot accomplish. He keeps giving you promises, something that is almost impossible. He says, don't worry, I'll get it for you. I'll do it. I'll help it. I'll do this. I'll do that. And you believe him. And after 20 years, you come back empty-handed. You realize that this is a liar. And something which is achievable, doable, he makes it impossible for you. Stay away from the liar. The second, وَإِيَّاكَ وَمُصَاحَبَةَ الْفَاسِقِ Someone who's indecent. Someone who's desolate. Someone who's immoral. He has no values. He has no values. Stay away from that person. Fasiq. Why? فَإِنَّهُ بَائِعُكَ بِأَكْلَةٍ أَوْ أَقَلَّ مِنْ ذَلِكَ He will betray you for the price of a sandwich. How much is the sandwich today? Two dollars? Three dollars? He can sell you for that price. He can sell you to your enemy for the price of a sandwich or even less than that. So stay away from the fasiq. There is no goodness if you are thinking that you're going to, to achieve something material or spiritual by being with, being with and befriending someone who is immoral, indecent, fasiq, fasiq, you are wrong. Do not waste your time. Don't waste your five minutes. I'm not saying don't waste your ten years with that person. Even five minutes. Stay away. And a fasiq, I give you an example. You may ask, who is the fasiq? The fasiq is the one who is addicted to alcohol. Yashrab al-khamr. All his life. Don't waste your time with such a person. This is one example of him. The third, وَإِيَّاكَ وَمُصَاحَبَةَ الْبَخِيلِ Do not be befriend with someone who is miserly, someone who is stingy, someone who is mean. Why? فَإِنَّهُ يَخْذِلُكَ فِي مَالِهِ أَحْوَجَ مَا تَكُونُ إِلَيْهِ At the time where you are in need, where you are in a very critical condition, Destinations. One people, second God, third paradise. And he's a close to three destinations. Qaribun min al nar. He he's a close to one destination. He is a close to the hellfire. That is the only destination he's a close with. Stay away from Bakhil. Bakhil betrays his own self. He needs food, he needs a dress. But he accumulates the cash for one day. Inshallah, the IRS would raid his house. When they take all the money from him, he realizes, Oh, I did not spend on myself, on my wife, on my... I lost my kids, I lost my parents. My mother was sick, I didn't give her this money. My father, my neighbor, my brother. At that time, he realizes. This is the Bakhil. Stay away from Bakhil. And I don't want to spend time on Bukhl here. Tight-fistedness. But you know the worst hadith and the worst threats in the Quran and in the hadith is directed to the Bakhil. Bakhil is not going to see the face of paradise, let alone paradise itself. He's not going to smell the fragrance of paradise. Four. وَإِيَّاكَ وَمُصَاحَبَةَ الْأَحْمَقِ Someone who is ahmaq, foolish, unwise, stay away from that person. Because the disease of foolishness is contagious, brothers and sisters. Contagious. Do not marry her. If you find the Miss America, Miss America in her beauty, but she's Ahmad, stay away from her. Don't marry her. If you find the richest person, someone who has more money than Bill Gates, you females stay away from him. He's Ahmad. 
because humq, foolishness, is contagious. It runs in the family. Then you're going to produce kids, five, six, ten, half a dozen, mashallah, kids who, have, who are brainless. Stay away from that. فَإِنَّهُ Why Imam says, stay away from him? For this wisdom here, for this reason. فَإِنَّهُ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَنْفَعُكَ فَيَضُرُّكَ He wants to do good to you. He wants to help you, but he hurts you. He hurts you not knowing that he's hurting you. He hurts you every day, but he thinks that he's doing good to you. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam says, مَنْ لَمْ يَتَجَنَّبْ مُصَادَقَةَ الْأَحْمَقِ If someone does not stay away from the ahmaq, the foolish, يُوشَكُ أَنْ يَتَخَلَّقَ بِأَخْلَاقِهِ He's almost, almost he's going to emulate and imitate his manners and his tradition. You're going to learn from that. It's contagious. Be careful. Stay away. Have you seen some diseases? We have to stay away from them. We don't go to that neighborhood. Stay away from that person. You may greet him. Say salam to him. May Allah bless you, inshallah. May Allah cure you. But don't say or do more than that. Don't waste your time. And the fifth. How many examples I said? Number one, the liar. Number two, fasiq. The immoral. Number three, the mean and bakhil. Number four, ahmaq. May Allah bless him and cure him. And number five, wa iyaka wa musahabat al lirahimah. Someone who disconnects with his family members. Qat'ur rahim. Disconnects. Why? Why stay away from him? Fa'innahu, Imam Zainul Abidin says. فَإِنِّي وَجَدْتُهُ مَلْعُونًا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى Allah curses a person that disconnects with his kinship, with his relatives. Someone who is not nice to his mother, you think he will be nice to you? Someone who neglects his own father, biological father, who has the right of existence over him, you think he will be nice and kind to you? Stay away from that person. If you see someone who has no relations, no ties with his parents, with his siblings, with his extended family member. He does not remember them. He neglects them. Stay away. Because most likely he's going to betray you. And he's going to disappoint you. And he's not going to do good to you. Of course, we have a moral duty of advising them. But some people, unfortunately, as I said in the first sermon, they don't listen to your advice, neither to Amir al-Mu'mineen, nor to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They only listen to their own whims and desires. When the desire overcomes, this is the result. People start forgetting about their own mothers and fathers. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim.